I'm here with Nigel Jacob, who is the co-chair of the Boston Mayor's Office of New Urban Mechanics, who does a lot of work with youth and civic participation. So let's let's just get started with um, what can you tell us about uh, the role of technology in, in getting young people more engaged in what's going on in, in Boston? Sure. So one of the things that we've seen uh, certainly in Boston and uh, in this country and around the world is that um, the level of expectations amongst young people has changed in terms of their ability to uh, expect change in the world around them and in the systems around them as well. And so insofar as we can enable uh, young people to learn the skills of, of hacking, of making, um, and of building both digital tools as well as sort of uh, kind of real world tools as well. I think there, it gives them a sense of empowerment and it gives them uh, the ability to provide a very direct kind of feedback to the, the people that might be the other end of those systems as to what uh, uh, the young people are, are interested in. So I think there's a tremendous uh, capability there. I, I know that you've been doing an interesting project with uh, with Harvard and with community neighborhood uh, associations, the Community Innovation Lab. Tell us about that a little bit. Sure. So the Community Innovation Lab uh, comes out of a couple of different uh, sources um, for us in New Mechanics. On the one hand, we always we've been very interested in promoting greater collaboration. And, and genuine collaboration across the various sectors, private sector, public, and, and civil society. But what we often find is that there is this uh, difference in language and uh, as well as sort of concepts and uh, and time frames that we see across these different uh, these different sectors. And as a result, it makes working together uh, very clunky. And so that was on the one hand. So we wanted to try to create a laboratory type environment where we could bring people together uh, and, and sort of smooth out some of the the, the traditional uh, stumbling blocks that enable them to to really collaborate and to really kind of get their roll up their sleeves and really try to do things and think about local experiments and so on. And on the other hand, well, we were also uh, in Boston, given that we are surrounded by some of the, the 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 greatest universities in the world. Here, we're also very interested in trying to enable greater collaboration amongst those people and community organizations. So we often see, um, you know, if you take a group like public policy students in particular, uh, you know, these are, these are people obviously that are committed to making change uh, nationally, internationally, locally. Um, the challenge is often that they have the, the skills that they, that they learn in graduate school is often um, that of analysis. And they, when they come to us here in Boston City Hall, for example, they they want to help. They want they want to 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 get involved and solve local problems, but you know what we don't really do a lot of direct analysis. And in terms of in terms of that's all we do. We do a lot of delivery of actual services and actually um, trying to to help people and support people. So we were also trying to very to create a very specific context in, we, in which we could turn university students into civic hackers and to connect them with community organizations to take on very specific problems and to en enable this, this, this collaboration across those different groups. This sounds like something that uh, ought to happen in, in more places. Uh, do, you, do you know of other efforts to, to replicate what you're doing? I think uh, not directly, actually. I think that certainly a lot of universities are trying to get their students out into the field. But one of the things that we've seen is that there's a tendency to want to make the university students, the, the graduate students or undergraduates, to, 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 to treat the community organizations as clients or as customers. And that's interesting, but I think that it also in many ways, um, does not in enable genuine collaboration. I think that when, if you think of yourself as a customer, as a client, you have a tendency to sort of hold people at arm's length and sort of be a passive receiver of whatever it is that they're trying to give you. And in particular, for these community organizations, we really, when we see it, the, the, their collaborations work best is when they're able to really, you know, get into the fray of, uh, of working with these partners to, to solve local problems and where they're not being sort of held at arm's length, but rather, you know, genuinely getting involved and, and sort of sweating a little bit over the development of these things and, and sort of prototyping and so on. You know, I, I've heard that, uh, that you're working with young programmers at, with Code for America. What are you doing with that project? Sure. So a couple of years ago, um, 
you know, our mayor is, is very focused, Mayor Menino is very focused on, on young people and enabling them to, to get the most out of their educational life while, the, while they're in school. And so we worked with Code for America a couple of years ago to develop a, a, a set of technologies that would make learning more engaging, to, to, to enable kids really to own their learning experiences and to create tools that would be oriented around how they work as opposed to how the, the school system works. And so we developed a bunch of different tools, not just for, for kids also, but for their parents, because we're also just as interested in getting their parents more, more actively engaged in the educational experience also. So we developed tools that would um, enable uh, sort of text-based um, text based out of school time, uh, sort of collaboration around homework and project uh, level work. Um, we, that was called Class Talk. We developed some tools for parents, as I said, you know, that would enable uh, one tool in particular called Discover BPS, or, or sorry, uh, Where's My School Bus, rather. Um, that would allow um, uh, parents to see, I mean, just like it sounds like, where there's their kids' school buses if it, if on a snowy day, for example. That's a big issue for parents. Um, Discover BPS is sort of a hybrid technology that enables both kids and their parents to understand what their educational opportunities are in terms of different kinds of schools that are out there and to present that in a way that's interesting and designed around the way people actually use the web. Those kinds of things. Fantastic. Keep up the great work. Um, Thank you. And um, I know people are going to be very excited to hear from you and, and, and talk with you at DML 2013. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be exciting. Okay. Thanks, Nigel. Thanks, Howard. Bye. Bye.